All right, guys, um, so we're going to talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions, um, but we're going to start with something kind of simple. Um, so first up, we've got this example. Um, and what you're going to notice is in the denominator, it's the same. So you notice how it says x plus 3 here and x plus 3 here. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to add the top portion since our denominator is the same. So I'm going to add the top portion. So we're going to combine like terms. Well, this 2x can't com be combined with anything, so we're going to just put 2x right here. And then we've got this 5 plus 5, which is going to give us 10. Now in the denominator, we're just going to carry over that x plus 3. We're not going to add those together. We're just going to rewrite that x plus 3. And don't forget about our domain restrictions on this. Okay, so what I mean by that is take the denominator and set it equal to 0 and solve. So if I take the denominator, set it equal to 0 and solve, this is going to give me x equals negative 3. Okay, which means that at x equals negative 3, we're going to have kind of like a little hole, which we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, so we can't have x equals negative 3 because that would give us an undefined answer. And as mathematicians, we don't like undefined answers. Over here on number 2, so on number 2, we notice that this is a subtraction problem because it has this negative in between, right? And in the denominator, they are both the same. So if that's the case, then what we're going to do is just subtract what's in the top. So I'm going to take 3x minus 2x and that's going to give me positive 1x and then I have negative 1 minus 5 which is just going to give me negative 6 all over 2x minus 1 and the reason why I have this in the denominator is because both of these pieces are the same so I'm just going to keep it and again we're going to restrict our domain so we're going to take the denominator set it equal to 0 and solve. So that means we're going to add 1 to both sides. And we're going to have 2x left on this side equals 1. Divide by 2 on both sides. So x is going to equal 1 half. So as our final answer, we're going to put x cannot equal 1 half. Now remember, the reason why we do domain restrictions is because we don't want that undefined answer in the bottom. We have zero in the denominator, that's undefined. These are our three steps for how we're going to do rational expressions, and we're going to see that on our next page. We're going to factor, rewrite, and add and subtract and simplify. But first we're going to review something that we've seen a while ago. So we're going to add and subtract fractions. Um, a lot of y'all have a hard time with this, so I would highly suggest doing some research slash going back and just getting some practice. Remember, when we add and subtract, we have to have the denominator be the same. So in order for us to do that, we're going to have to multiply by something in the top and the bottom on both of these because 10 and 3 are not the same number. So if that's the case, then I'm going to multiply by 3 over here. So I'm going to take 7 tenths, and I'm going to multiply by 3 in the top, and I'm going to multiply by 3 in the bottom. So when I do that, that's going to give me 21 over 30. Now this one third, that doesn't have a 30 in the bottom, right? Or it doesn't have a 10 in the bottom either. either. So I'm going to take one third, and I'm going to multiply it by 10 in the top and 10 in the bottom. So that's going to give me 10 over 30. Again, the reason why we want to multiply it by something is so that we have a common denominator. Well, now we can just add straight across. So that's going to give me 31 over 30. This will be my final answer. All right. Over here on number four. We're talking about having the same denominator. Well, these don't have the same denominator, so that means I'm going to have to take the first fraction and multiply by something in order to give me the same denominator as the thing that's over here. Well, I can multiply by 2 and over here and get the denominator 
to be equal to 10. So I'm going to multiply by 2 in the top and the bottom. So that's going to give me 28 over 10 minus 7 over 10. And we notice how the denominator is the same. So that means that I can subtract those. So that's going to give me 28 minus 7. So I'll have 21 over 10. Now, if we're able to simplify this, we can. Um, but in this case, we can't simplify it. All right, on number five, we're starting to deal with functions. So what's going to happen here is we notice that the denominators are not the same. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to factor because it'll make it a little bit easier to multiply by something. So, for instance, down here, if I factor this, then what I'm going to get is x plus 2 times x minus 2. So once I've factored that, what I'm going to do is, do you notice how there is this x minus 2 right here? And there's an x minus 2 right here, but we need something else in this denominator in order for these to be the same. So we're going to take what we have over here on the left fraction, and we're going to multiply by x plus 2 in the top and the bottom. So we're going to multiply by x plus 2 in the top and the bottom. And the reason why we got to do it in the top and the bottom is because we can't alter the fraction. We've just got to multiply it by something like 1. What I mean by 1 is x plus 2 over x plus 2. That's 1. So we're multiplying by 1. So when we do that, we get something that looks like this. x squared plus 2x over x minus 2 times x plus 2. And we've got plus negative 8 over x minus 2 plus, times x plus 2. And so now if we combine our like terms and simplify our expression, we're going to get x squared plus 2x minus 8 all over x minus 2 times x plus 2. With our domain restrictions being x cannot equal negative 2 and positive 2. Over here, we have x plus 5 in the denominator, and we have x squared minus 25 over here. So what I've got to do is I've got to factor first. So this will become x plus 5 times x minus 5. And so since we notice that this denominator has an x plus 5 and this has an x plus 5, but it doesn't have that x minus 5, we're going to take this fraction right here and we're going to multiply by x minus 5. So that's going to give us x times x minus 5 over x plus 5 times x minus 5 plus negative 50 over x plus 5 times x minus 5. So all I've done so far is I've taken this first fraction and multiplied by x minus 5 in the top and the bottom. So this will give me, if I multiply this out, so x times x, that's going to give me x squared. x times negative 5, that's going to give me negative 5x minus 50 over x plus 5 times x minus 5. So our domain restriction is going to be x cannot equal negative 5 and positive 5. However, if I factored this, I would get, like in the top, I would get something that looks like this. Add a new page. Okay. So we've got x squared minus 5x. minus 50 over x plus 5 times x minus 5. So if I factor what's in the top here, 
I'm going to get something that looks like this. x minus 10 times x plus 5 over x plus 5 times x minus 5. And if you notice that there's a repeat here, there's this x plus 5 in the top and the bottom. Well, those can cancel out, right? So what am I left with? x minus 10 over x minus 5. And what's my domain restriction? It's going to be x e cannot equal 5 because remember, we're going to take our denominator and we're going to set it equal to 0 and we're going to solve. So these are the ones that I want you to try. Um, I want you to pause the video for about 30 seconds and just kind of like try it on your own. Um, I'll post the answers in a couple of seconds. Um, so take a moment, try it on your own. All right, so I know that was probably terrifying to have that blue pop up on the screen. Um, so recap really quickly. So do you notice how these two are not the same denominator? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part and multiply by 6x. That's what I did right here. Okay. And then I'm going to take this part right here and multiply by that 4x up in the top. Okay. When I do that, I'm going to distribute. So that's going to give me this. And that's going to give me this. Be careful of that negative right here. You do have to carry it with it. And so I'm going to get this when I simplify that out. Okay. Notice how it becomes one fraction. So it goes from being two pieces to one fraction, right? So since we have that same denominator, once we make it into the same denominator, we can combine those. Then we're just going to add and subtract and combine like terms. And that'll give us this. Now remember, our domain restrictions, we're going to take what the pieces that are in the bottom, we're going to set them equal to zero, and we're going to solve. And hopefully you got something out of this. I'll post some more videos on this one. Um, if you want to try eight, and if you want to come ask me about it in class, that's fine. Um, but I'm not going to do it right now because I'm running out of time. But that is how you add and subtract rational expressions.